space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. It's continuing mission to explore strange new worlds. Well, in this case, it's continuing mission is something a little different to highlight the AI upscaling techniques built into the new version of Nvidia's Shield Android TV streamer, built on the same core processor as the Nintendo Switch. I mean, on the face of it here, the side by side, seemingly quite impressive, right? Apparently out of thin air, a 1080p stream of one of my favorite TV shows of all time is getting a 4K upgrade gaining what looks like a ton of unseen detail. And as you may know, AI upscaling as a concept is something that NVIDIA has spent a couple of years working on now with ever increasing quality. All of which is fascinating, I'm sure, but you came to this video for some theory crafting about the supposed Switch Pro that's in development. And believe it or not, there is a connection here and potentially a compelling one. But first of all, some housekeeping and who better to tell it like it is when it comes to the notion of a 2020 Switch hardware upgrade. It's false. No way. No, not this time. It's totally made up. Pure fiction. It's fiction. It's fiction. It's a made up tale. This one was invented by a writer. So yeah, Nintendo itself has ruled out any new Switch hardware for 2020. And when there's a supply shortage in the UK and used models going for retail prices, well, you can see why. But with all of that out of the way, onto the theory crafting. It all started with a report out of Korea claiming that the Switch Pro is in development and its technical properties are somewhat curious. To cut a long story short, according to this report, we shouldn't expect to see a vast improvement in GPU power, but Switch Pro apparently is based on a custom processor and it is apparently using Nvidia's Volta architecture. This report may be true, it may not, but are we likely to see a next-gen Switch with NVIDIA support? I'd say that's quite likely because NVIDIA told us in an investor call that it's projecting a two-decade relationship with Nintendo. So yeah, it does seem likely, right? On top of that, the trajectory of NVIDIA's own hardware development tells us a lot about how computer graphics are gonna evolve in general and how the Volta architecture was the first step forward in that regard with its support for machine learning features. The same tech that's used for, you guessed it, AI upscaling in PC games. Concept is simple, spend far less compute power painting pixels and more of it making those fewer pixels a lot prettier. Then use machine learning to up the image and well, yeah, job done. Could it work for a new mobile device though? That's the question. Well, let me explain how this particular piece of theory crafting is going to play out. According to Nvidia Marketing, the new Shield has AI upscaling built in, almost certainly not using hardware AI acceleration, but via the traditional shader cores. But still, what's to stop me from running some switch capture through that to see how AI upscaling looks on game visuals? Maybe it's indicative of the kind of results Nintendo could get from a future handheld that does use hardware acceleration. Now after that, I'm going to approach this from the other direction. This is Wolfenstein Youngblood running on Nintendo Switch, dynamic resolution temporal super sampling. Yeah, it's one of those impossible ports that shouldn't be running on Switch at all, but does so by running at obscenely low resolutions at times. It works, but in common with pretty much every other impossible port on the platform, you pay the price in terms of blur. Man, it's blurry. Funnily enough, the PC version has just had an upgrade that supports DLSS, Nvidia's AI upscaling for its RTX cards. What would happen if we ran Wolfenstein at the same minimum resolution as the Switch game, 360p, but let the tensor cores, the machine learning hardware, upscale it back up to 720p, the max resolution of the Switch version. And hey, let's be generous here. Let's say the Switch Pro can hit the giddy heights of 540p on medium settings. How would this compare to the PS4 version? In short, let's say that this Korean rumor is true. Let's say that GPU power isn't a massive upgrade over the current Switch. Could AI upscaling kind of make up the difference? Step one, we're going to be uh, looking at the new Shield Android TV first of all, and here it is. In a world where pretty much every TV money can buy comes with a vast majority of the apps you need built in, do you need a streamer box? 
or rather a streamer tube like this one. Apparently so, because Nvidia keeps on making them. This is actually the third iteration. It's using the same Tegra X1 Plus, codenamed Marico, as that found in the latest Switch hardware. It's also pretty expensive what it is, and yet it still sells. It's been a while since I used a shield, but I rather like what this offers. Think of it as a high-end streaming option with GeForce Now cloud gaming support. But it's the AI upscaling feature that we're interested in here. You can swap between basic, enhanced and AI upscaling modes. And as you saw with the Enterprise there, clearly it's doing something, something different. So how does it work with game footage? Well, there's my first problem. AI upscaling works with any video you run on the shield, except for content that runs at above 30 frames per second which is all of my capture. Simple solution though, change the file metadata to say it's actually running at 30 FPS and let it play out on the shield at half speed, then speed it up here back to full speed in the edit. We're going to start with Doom 3, a native 1080p 60 FPS game, which apparently gets a 4K upscale with the filter. And well, it definitely looks sharper. More detail is seemingly revealed. The difference seems to be even more pronounced with Dragon Quest Builders 2, which runs at native 1080p as well, but certainly not 60 frames per second. Uh, so yeah, look at the ground detail here. Something's going on. But my gut feeling here is that the AI scaling in play presents more like a sharpening filter. I took some before and after shots in Photoshop and used a sharpen filter on them and got similar results. The thing about Nvidia's PC-based AI upscaling is that it's not just sharpening, it does actually add detail. If you look at what the shield upscale does at the pixel level, the jaggies there are the same in terms of uh, length and width. Maybe sharpening 1080p gives the illusion of more detail at 4K? I don't know, but for me, this isn't the solution. A Switch Pro or whatever would likely be running at 1080p output, so I also stacked up the AI upscale option downscale to full HD against my original captures. Here's a trip to the Korok Forest in Zelda Breath of the Wild. I mean, well, I'm still not entirely convinced, but I think the key thing for me is that doing a zoom in on both screenshots and footage running, I'm not sure there's much going on here that a Switch coder couldn't add in natively in their own titles if they actually wanted to. Here's a look at Mortal Kombat 11. The results I find rather interesting because what we're seeing here is more like a filter for the blur, more like anything else. Some might say a sharpening filter. The base jaggies, the edge aliasing, the same. If not more pronounced, now it's sharper. Phase one of the AI upscaling experiment, and I'm gonna have to put this down as a failure. Maybe there's something very clever going on that I'm missing here, but the edge ringing here, I just don't think it's attractive. I think it's like a super sharpening filter as opposed to any kind of AI upscale. I did harbor the idea that the algorithm being used may be better tuned for TV and movie content. And yet, it does look better, but you can see here on the Star Trek TNG credits, there's still those big sharpening artifacts there too. Phase two in our experiment, PC-based AI upscaling at switch spec visuals. Idea here, pretty straightforward. As I mentioned earlier, Wolfenstein Youngblood is out on switch and it's also just received a DLSS upgrade for PC. Three upscaling options are available. Performance, balanced and quality. The higher the quality preset, the higher the base resolution before the AI upscaling kicks in. But as we've discovered in the past, the performance mode is remarkably good looking, bearing in mind that uh, pixel counts suggest the native resolution is just 25% of the overall output. What you're seeing here is the closest switch match we could get. 720p native resolution versus each DLSS variant at low settings. And I'm surprised at how well it holds up, I'll be honest with you. And this is where things start to get fascinating because even the super low resolution performance mode looks perfectly presentable up against native 720p. As for the Switch port, well, it uses dynamic resolution topping out at 720p, but it spends a fair amount of its time in the 360p ballpark. If our maths are right, the machine learning model is generating around 900,000 pixels per frame from just 230,000 native ones. There are artifacts on edges, and I think some buffers in the makeup of the image may be sub-native, so maybe even sub 360p. So they suffer more so, but overall it looks fine and it would hold up a ton better on a handheld screen too. So let's take a look at some Switch comparisons. 
The initial engine-driven cutscene provides few clues here, apart from the strong suggestion that Switch is actually running on lower-than-low settings, something I think we established in our analysis. Some post-process effects on the PC side seem to be affected by the super-low actual native resolution as well. Now, I think what's happening here is that the developers on the Switch take the hit on frame rate to run at a high resolution, uh, in Switch terms, certainly. But our AI upscaled competitor compares favorably, even though it's almost certainly running at a much lower internal resolution. But once we move into gameplay, well, the difference is far more pronounced. There's more clarity, more definition. Wolfenstein is a fairly dynamic game, so close matches on side-by-side -side footage are minimal. But are they really needed? Just moving from Switch to PC low with AI upscaling shows a remarkable increase in clarity. But let's move this theory on. Let's say we do get more GPU power in a prospective Switch Pro upgrade. I mean, not a prodigious amount more, but enough to move from lower than low settings to console quality medium. DLSS performance mode at 1080p should be around 540p internal base resolution. Uh, a good match for a mobile upgrade, I think. So I thought I would see how that would look compared to the native 1080p PS4 version of Youngblood. I think it's not that bad, actually. We've got the same sort of caveats we saw at 720p low, really, in terms of those lower resolution buffers. But man, the images here are clearly comparable. And more than that, I think what we have here is an image that would hold up for living room play. And if an upgraded Switch went for a 1080p LCD screen, I'd imagine that this will look pretty stunning, actually. Something to think about. So, a final point to consider, a more global look at NVIDIA's AI upscaling. Yeah, I want to end this video by talking about DLSS from NVIDIA and putting it to the test in different scenarios. You see, we've used Youngblood as a showcase game for image reconstruction in a few videos now, but let's be fair, DLSS has had its fair share of mishaps since the technology launched. I think it's entirely fair to ask whether Youngblood is just a one-off. So, here's what I found out. First of all, uh, Youngblood is using the latest iteration of the technology. It's new and improved. But playing devil's advocate, old DLSS also handed in some great results on some games, but not on others. And could we be looking at a similar situation here with the new tech? Well, right now there is one more PC game that is using the latest DLSS, Deliver Us The Moon. And here's how native 1080p rendering on max settings compares to DLSS performance mode, the lowest resolution mode, remember. This is a stiffer challenge for NVIDIA's upscaling tech because the TAA employed in the base game has far less blur than Wolfenstein's. So while there was a good argument that we got better than native detailing in some respects, on the id Software Machine Games title, I don't think that holds as much water for Deliver Us The Moon. Edge shimmering is more pronounced and sub-pixel detail is not as well defined. However, as I said, this is the lowest quality mode available, presumably running from a mere 960 by 540 base resolution. And to be fair, I still think it looks great. It's just more likely to hold up better at higher pixel counts or indeed on higher DLSS quality levels. I've got to say though, it's in no way a bad presentation as such. And uh, yeah, I'd quite happily play it like this. And I really want to see more top tier titles using this technology. Maybe, maybe we've reached the point now where we have the technology to mitigate the performance impact of high-end features like real-time ray tracing, or maybe this feature could simply be used to open the door to high refresh rate monitor support. 120 FPS? Why not? Okay then, so let's round this all up then. In the PC space, AI upscaling, DLSS, a variable start to be sure, but the latest iteration of the tech, as I think we've demonstrated in this video, is really quite impressive and scalable across a whole bunch of resolutions. But we do need more content to get a better idea of its strengths and weaknesses. Two games right now? It's not enough to draw firm conclusions, but the head-to-heads comparing the lowest quality, highest performance mode up against native resolution rendering, I mean, it's not bad. But this idea of using machine learning to boost resolution, I think we've also demonstrated that it could work on a potential Switch Pro. Even with a paltry core pixel count, DLSS could work wonders for 720p games, while the gap between PS4 and an upgraded mobile device closes somewhat at 1080p. Interesting stuff, but that's where I'm leaving everything for now. 
Now let's go through the usual outro motions, liking, subscribing, I certainly like that. If you think this content is worth sharing with others, you can do that and I will thank you for it. Just as I will if you click on the bell icon there for instant notifications whenever we post new videos. The DF Patreon changes our foot there and are all for the better, but it will always be delivering pristine quality video downloads of everything we do. And if you love what we do and want to support John, Alex, Tom and I more directly, the Patreon, that's the way forward. But that's all from me for now. Thanks for reaching the end point with me and thanks for watching and indeed supporting Digital Foundry.